Hey you guys, I hope you're doing very well. In any case, with all of that sorted, we are going to move on to the next question in the My 30 Day World 2018. How are the taxes and tributes collected in your world? Went into Jeremy Clarkson there for a second. This rule of three may strike you as something similar to Planescape, but it, what will generally happen is, is that the tax man will come in and take tithe from the thief take it through to the vassal who upon receiving it from the vassalage basically ratify that that's what they've got then take it on to the lord the lord will then take it even further on to the city and then from the city there it will be distributed for it as i've said in other cases the city requires a lot of resources in order to function because it, they basically do not work well on their own in top of that is a requirement to supply each of the five three cities have to supply to a communal collective force this is in the form of manpower food and resources and public works such as the horse's life within the five free cities taxes are incredibly important they are both the things that the different cities use in order to fund different official works rebuilding exercises in the aftermath of storms uh, funding the army you know it does all the things that you would really consider taxes to be and while it isn't thought of in this way i like to think of it in terms of three distinct layers the first is the local, the second is the uh, city-based, and the final one is the collective-based. Now, the, uh, these three levels are very distinct from each other because I feel that one sifts into the other, moving upwards through the layers. As I've said before, the Five Three Cities is very much in the throes of the feudalistic system. Feudalism is a system that is very much similar to capitalism and how it is used in our modern day. Feudalism divides the world into ostensibly three layers. The first is the lord, the second is the vassal, and the third is the thief. These three layers have different duties and responsibilities on the basis of society, on the basis of culture, and on the basis of military. Now, by no means does the five free cities use feudalism unilaterally. Each of them has a different definition of it. Every one of them has a different structuring. And the reason that I'm talking about it right now is because taxes have to have a reason to be taken. The different cities have different methods of it. So as I've said, societal and governing structures actually exist almost entirely to protect people from war and storms. And as a result, it really is that the taxes almost universally go straight into those kind of efforts. On the lowest, most ruralized areas, these taxes are taken by somebody and they work with the authority of the local fief lord and are under the protection of the local vassalage. And the reason that I say it like that is because it is actually a bit of a problem that can arise. They are not beholden. They don't have to obey the words of the local vassals, but they do have to be protected by them. And a certain amount of the political landscape is actually dictated by this very tense relationship that exists between the fief lord who is supposed to have the authority and the voice and the word and the ear of the liege lord and yet there is also this tax collector who seems to be working above them. Another aspect of tax collecting is actually to do with what do people do when they do not meet their taxes. And the other, the five free cities actually have a very, very different way of doing things. Uh, for instance, City of Winter Night actually has this very interesting situation where rather than uh, having peasants earn crop or anything to then give over in tithe, all peasant work land is actually under the level of plantations and are taken immediately upon their reaping by the tax collector in order for them to be taken onto guilds. Now, this actually has the interesting problem of every peasant still having a quota that they must work from the land. And if they don't meet that, they haven't met their tithe. They haven't met their tax. This often results in them being evicted from their home and the people do not survive very long in winter night lands if they have been evicted from their home. If it's not for the storm, then it'll be for some kind of bandit king or something like that. Sanguine's fiefs are actually much more akin to families than they are to traditional fiefs, and their taxes are actually uh, agreed upon on a case-by-case -case basis. 
Now, tributes actually work in a very different way from the classic idea of taxes. Tributes, rather than being in the form of resources or foodstuffs or even straight up money, tributes are actually going to be public works. They're generally done in the name of or to empower some certain religion over another, some sect over another, and it is often done by some patron moving downwards. It is, to say the least, the way for someone who is more empowered by than the other members of the society to somehow look out for them. Um, ostensibly, we're talking in terms of appeasement rituals. This is generally done by people who are much higher up on the totem pole. The reason for this is because of a new, uh, less used version of the vassalage system in which the fiefs supply money to the vassals who then not only look out for their defence and protection from the storms and stockpiling resources and these kind of things, maintaining the public good, but also to maintain the spirit of the community. This is actually because people of the Five Free Cities area actually have a very mercenary perspective on the use of religion. This is not because they are some way unbelievers. The people of the world have a very desperate, fervent worship and faith in the supernatural. The issue is, is that whether or not it's going to actually do anything for them. The culture is utilitarian to the point of a fault, and they treat the relationship not only as a method of appeasement, but also as a bargaining chip. We will supply you with these things, but at the same time, we want you to make sure that you don't kill our crops, that this particular well does not fall fallow. And this would actually be very, very good if religions weren't actually so unreliable relative to how magic works. And that idea is not lost on the vassals, fiefs, lords, as well as scholars and clergy. They recognise that because it's very, very difficult to really recognise when deities or spirits or whoever it is that you're supplying worship to would actually aid you when you need them. And people's worship is so desperate that it's willing to just shift on the turn over time just in the betterment of improving their life or anything like that. It creates this vicious cycle in which faith, which is supposed to be based on the idea of trust even when you don't receive something in return, not really having the time to properly get into the give and take relationship, that is actually expected from religions of our world. And with that, that is the end of my answer today. I do hope you enjoyed it. I suggest that you look up another book this time. This is Machiavelli's The Prince, which was written in the 16th century, and it actually goes into a certain amount of detail in regards to monarchies. Um, doesn't really have anything to concern with what we were talking about, about feudalism, but it is very interesting, and I do think that you might enjoy it. If you enjoyed this, um, I hope to see you soon. And I will say ciao.